Hello, and welcome to the Arkansas Center for Health Improvement's podcast, Wonks at Work. I'm Craig Wilson, your host, a self-declared wonk, dad of two boys, native Arkansan, and I've been the health policy director at the Arkansas Center for Health Improvement for more than a decade. On this show, we aim to demystify, boil down, and unwonk, if you will, complex topics so that you can understand how the healthcare system is working or not working for you. This is our 40th episode, and today we're going to talk about healthcare payers. That is, who pays for the healthcare services that we get? Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, that's easy. It's the insurance company that pays. And you'd be right, but only in part. See, the government is a large payer through the Medicare, Medicaid, and Veterans Affairs programs. But individual consumers and businesses are the other major payers. Now, as is the case with the government and individual consumers, businesses are increasingly concerned about the cost of care, and businesses are no more protected from increasing costs of care than individual consumers and the government. They just use different mechanisms to deal with it. When it comes down to it, all of these payers want quality care that is affordable and accessible to them, but particularly for employers, Achieving that goal also impacts employees' wellness and productivity, and more broadly, the employer's ability to grow and compete locally and globally. So, here to talk with us about this and more is Ryan Cork, who leads the Healthcare Transformation Division for the Northwest Arkansas Council. Ryan is a Navy man, but has worked in multiple roles in healthcare with the Cleveland Clinic, Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center, and James Cancer Hospital. Ryan has a bachelor's degree in science from Franklin University and a master's degree in healthcare administration from Capella University, along with a certificate in executive leadership from MIT. That's a lot to say. So thanks, Ryan, for joining us and and welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Glad to be here. All right. So before we get to the more serious stuff, I want to know what keeps you busy when you're not working. Yeah, I, uh, it's a good question. You, you know, probably like like everyone or the majority of everyone, it, it, it throughout the pandemic as we transition to uh, more of a, a mobile vo- virtual life, it, it seems like you're always working, right? We're always we're always connected. Um, but I I think outside of the 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 true office space, right? Outside of downtime, outside of a screen time, I enjoy running. I. Yeah. I You know, I go out locally, like out to Hobbs State Park here in northwest Arkansas and just pick one of these trails that are nine miles or or 12 miles long and just set out. Right. And just just, go. Yeah, just go, man. (laughs) Find my way. Find my path. You hope you make it back. Yeah. Um, And just run, you know, run, really run around and and see what you you can find and explore. And, you know, I've always enjoyed that is is like a free therapy, a decompression time and just really clears your heads and, and, and your thoughts. And so I, I would say running would be my outside of work activity. I'm, I'm not good at it. Uh, you know, I'm not <laughs> winning any races anytime soon, but I, I enjoy being out there and just having that, that space and that solace to just kind of re-energize and reconnect. Yeah. With- I, I'm the same. Now I don't, I don't pick the eight or nine mile, you know, type things. A, a, a nice three mile run is, is good for me. I think beyond that, I'm just hurting myself. <laughs> Yeah, I enjoy it. I, I, I'll tell you, I can't, I mean, I, I could, but, you know, I'll stop along the way and, and truly yeah. just you know, take a look and see what's around and kind of explore some of the environment. Take it all in. Take so it I all asked in. this uh, of all of our wonky guests. Yeah. What, what would you say is your theme song? Well, that, that may be the best question we have. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I think there are, there's, there, there are probably some songs that, that in my head are my theme songs, right? And and I would name some some artists. Um, you know, they're they're different, like a Kendrick Lamar song or a Nipsey Hussle song, uh, even a, a few by by Chance the Rapper that I enjoy the messaging for me, right? Yeah. To, to me and and kind of the motivation and you know the uh, Kendrick Lamar has one you know that's out that just speaks to to kind of recognizing and accepting where you are, but, but, you know, also staying grounded. Yeah. Uh, 
I have another song, and, and as you had mentioned, a, a Navy man. So I, I enlisted in, and then I converted and, and was commissioned as an officer later on. Uh, but in the Navy and boot camp, so they kind of towards the end of boot camp, the, the drill instructors, they bring you all together uh, and you huddle around and you're, you know, you're hugging, you've completed this, you know, grandiose task. Yeah. In your mind at that point, it's the hardest thing you've ever done in life. And they, they turn on Lee Greenwood's um, God bless the USA. Yeah. And everyone like immediately. So we have a, you know, a, a squad of whatever, 30 to 50 guys, everyone starts crying and hugging <laughs> and, you know, slapping backs and everything. And so while it's it, no one else in the world may ever say that's their theme song, that that song has a special place yeah. and a meaning, you know, to me uh, in, in, in my heart, in my mind. And, and I enjoy that song. That's great. That's great. So, um, all right, let's get to business. So let's first, go. tell us a little bit about the Northwest Arkansas Council. Why was it formed? How does the council define what is Northwest Arkansas? And in what areas is the council working? Absolutely. So I'll I'll kind of go go backwards from today to to our inception and and really hope to paint a picture and, and capture everything we do. You know, I think like some organizations, there there are probably steps that uh, folks don't talk about a lot, but we're still involved in. But big big tickets are buckets, right? We look at quality of life. We look at workforce in the region, infrastructure. Uh, also, sustainability, recycling, uh, DEI, healthcare, clearly. What's, what's, so what's DDI? DEI. DE, oh, DEI. Okay. Uh, sorry. D -E -I. Diversity, equity, inclusion. Yes, sir. Uh, healthcare, which is my lane, and, and housing, but specific to affordable housing. Okay. Uh, and so these are, these are separate work streams within the council, but all pushing out to the communities in Northwest Arkansas, which is defined by Benton and Washington County, all pushing out to our communities that, that collectively we grow and advance together, right? And, okay. and I, I believe in my work in healthcare specifically, all of these are part of healthcare, right? I mean, yeah. affordable housing, there's, there, there's challenging, you know, you pick a place, but West Virginia University in Morgantown uh, they have an on-site housing option for nurses, right? They were losing staff because they they didn't live in the town and couldn't commute back and forth. And so they they put the cost-benefit analysis together and said, it's cheaper for us to retain these staff, stop having to recruit and rehire if we just build a, uh, an affordable housing yeah. you know, building there on campus. So looking at affordable housing, obviously having a, a diverse workforce, a workforce that that represents our population or the population they treat. Sustainability gets into recycling, water, energy, uh, but also just within the, the hospitals themselves. And, you know, as you look at climate change in the future, uh, what what is the role that a hospital plays in that, right? I mean, there are things, and, and you know, as a provider, the Huge MSD, facilities. <laughs> right, in the MSDS sheets of what, what is toxic or, or what is not and what can we exchange for non-toxic <laughs> items. Uh, and then also getting into just infrastructure, sustainable and growth of infrastructure so that we make sure we have, in my world, enough brick and mortar facilities, but also in the larger world, our airport can accommodate the growth, our schools yeah. can accommodate the growth, our roadways can accommodate the growth. And then quality of life. That's that's the fun part, right? We all we all want to have have a great time outside. And and I think you, you know Northwest Arkansas has done a fantastic and and collective job together. You know of of really bringing in the the best of the best and and having a a safe place to live that that is still you know full of things to do, both indoors, outdoors, every season. Uh, and it's just a fantastic place to be. So, you know, that's a little bit who we are, what we do in terms of counties, the, your original question of what, where did we start? And so this, this predates, predates me, but, you know, probably late 80s, early 90s, a, a group of, of individuals that ended up um, leading some large companies uh, that are based out of Northwest Arkansas. And, and so Mr. Walton, Mr. Tyson, Mr. Hunt, 
uh, among you all know all those familiar names, <laughs> right? All, all those all those familiar names uh, among uh, you know a, a host of others came together and formed a business council, right? I mean, it, we all have them. They're probably in each city, each yeah. each you know place. Uh, but but this group realized what the future was going to bring, right? They're all visionaries, and yeah. they knew, hey, we have something. We we have something good. Uh, but in order to make it sustainable and grow to what their vision was, they knew that they had to have those wraparound services that would support it. And that meant, again, the roads, the schools, the airports, just the ability to grow. Uh, and that vision is is still there. You know, yeah. we, we look out now at, at 2023 and I look out in healthcare, what are we going to be doing in 2043? What does, what does healthcare look like? What does you know, what, what, what's our airports look like? Do we have, you know, flying cars or in, instead of our, our at-home hybrid car, do we have at-home, you know, aerial mobile devices, you know, that we can control? So um, the council is in really a lot of spaces. I, I think it's a wonderful organization. We have great leadership uh, and they're supported by some of all of those, those same last names that founded yeah. us, plus a, a host of others that have since joined the party. Well, it's good that they it's good that they incorporated health, and I know that the healthcare transformation division came along more recently. So, what stimulated the uh, the start of of the division that you lead? Yeah. Um, so, looking at what what their growth was going to be at that time, mapping out the 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 kind of sidelines, if you will, the main field being their book of business, the sidelines being everything that supported it. Um, Healthcare was one at the time that the growth wasn't there. I, I think it was a traditional mindset. We have a hospital. We all go to this hospital. We're all fine. You know, as as our population grew, our in some cases, our local hospitals didn't offer service X or wait times may have been something that you weren't willing to wait and or the, the tertiary quaternary care for service X wasn't provided locally. And patients, residents started leaving the area, which mm -hmm. was created, as you know, an out migration. So in 2019, the council commissioned a study to absolutely do that, is study the out migration for, for Northwest Arkansas. Uh, Dr. Thompson, who you know, has, has broken that out. And, you know, we've got into different payer sources, mm -hmm. look at Medicare out migration, commercial out migration, and then also self pay out migration. But in totality, all of these numbers add up, and and I, I'll I'll tell you that I'll I'll bump it up a little bit, but at this point I don't know it makes a, a huge difference. But I I say a billion dollars a year per year that out migrate out of Northwest Arkansas, and so, you know that speaks to obviously a loss of of opportunity for economic development. Uh, some of those dollars staying here in in our healthcare systems. Uh, but also the, the surrounding systems that support our, our healthcare environment. And then, you know, the other piece is us being able to grow our hospitals and, and providers uh, that are here, but us, us recruiting, retaining talent. You know, we want to be able to offer all of these services that individuals are out migrating for here in Northwest Arkansas, sure. reverse that and become a, a, a place that patients in migrate, you know, that we bring them home, but we also able to have capacity for patients from Oklahoma, you know, Missouri, Kansas, Texas, uh, so that they can come to Northwest Arkansas, see how, how great we are, but also receive excellent world-class care. Excellent. Excellent. So you mentioned some of the changes that you hope to see. What are, what are some of the changes that you've already seen in your tenure uh, in the healthcare space in Northwest Arkansas? Yeah, we, um, you know, my space, so about three years here now on the ground. So there, there are some things that are that are newer to me, you know, that that folks that have been here a while may say, well, we've had we've had that right. We've had this. But I, I think of everything what's happened and the largest change that I've seen within my tenure is everyone's ability to collaborate. Right. Mm -hmm. We we all have the same problems and challenges. We, yeah. we all can identify the same success and, and rewards and benefits of doing good, um, but we've all done it separately. And, and so we, we are now coming together and by we all being the healthcare systems coming together um, to, to impact change positively. So that I've seen, and that's tremendous. But when you get down to specifics, you know, we have Upskill NWA uh, led by Carol Morales, um, 
uh, Hark NWA, which is uh, led by Josh Hall. Mm-hmm. And I think you know Josh. Yeah, uh, we did a podcast with him too. Yeah, uh, not uh, that 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 guy's really great. He's he's super intelligent, bright, and and very giving. I he's one of my favorite people. Uh, we've grown our graduate medical education footprint from from number of students that we have uh, or that we're getting. Mental health specifically, uh, you know, is a challenge for for the union, but a challenge in in Arkansas and Northwest Arkansas as well. Um, seeing ways that we can collaborate uh, that I don't think exist in anywhere else in, in the U.S., but looking at you know working with our local law enforcement agencies and embedding social workers with police officers embedding community healthcare workers with police officers, embedding community healthcare workers and social workers at our public libraries. And so places and spaces that typically either, you know, the, the library may see a, an unsheltered population who are, are looking for help. And so having someone there to even guide, you know, he or she into a, a, a program like Josh runs with Hark NWA, yeah. uh, that's, it, it, it just is a connection, right? But it just didn't happen. And so we're able to look at that. And then the law enforcement piece with the social workers, um, you know, it, it helps those that the, the officers come in contact with, you know, if, if they're in need of, of help in, in regards to their social, kind of their SDOH, you know, mindset. And, and so we're doing some really great things, you know, within not my time here, not because of me, but because the willingness of the community to come together to work together uh, and want to advance healthcare in Northwest Arkansas. That's great. And that's, that's hard to do. That's, that's hard to build. Um, So that's very promising. Um, We we all hear about how Northwest Arkansas is growing. Yes, sir. What, what are we talking about there? What's the extent of that? Can you quantify it? Well, the there is it, it has been quantified, um, and and so statistically, it's supposed to double a hundred percent, right? And we're we're going to take by what time? By the next twenty years, by twenty. Oh wow! Right, and so we're we we have our Thanksgiving table and it's full, right? But we're we're now inviting you know a a hundred percent more folks to the table to to eat with us, if you will. So, you know, in that scenario. It, you got to get more, more food, right? More chairs, yeah. more table, more, more, you know, iced tea. And so looking at, at Northwest Arkansas in the same way that speaks to, and is a lot of the why, you know, behind what I'm doing and others are doing is because we are going to multiply by two. Yeah. And so we need to ensure that, you know, we have adequate inpatient beds. We have adequate ER beds. We have adequate, you know, internal medicine, family medicine, OBGYN, but also to, to increase our offerings around subspecialty care, right? And so do we have uh, subspecialty clinics and in, in going into the way of MS clinics? You know, I, I know there's a doc in Little Rock that a lot of folks travel to. You know, do we have that same type of, of offering locally, you know, so that we can keep our patients local? And yeah. I, I, that's what we need to get into in that space uh, I use MS as an example, but getting into that space, you know, that everything that that you would have to travel to or go back to the store and get in my Thanksgiving, you know, kind of scenario, we have it already in the house, right? Yeah. You don't need to leave. We got everything you want. That's uh, good. Yeah. And that's what we're trying to accommodate as, as we see that growth coming, because the growth will come, right? It's 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 fueled by our Fortune 500 companies, our startup companies, our accelerators, the university, UAMS. I mean, everyone locally is growing and expanding. Um, so it, it it is, you know, the you build it and they will come, but they're coming and we need to yeah. build it, you know, type scenario. So um, so I kind of started out uh, this this podcast session with talking about businesses as, as payers. And, and one of the things I like to point out is that employer-based insurance came about in an odd way, right? When employers were subject to a wage freeze during World War II, they looked for low-cost benefits as an alternative way to attract employees. And at the time, healthcare insurance was something cheap that they could offer employees. But we know that that is completely changed. <laughs> it's increasingly costly so do you see a time when employers just get out of the business of offering health insurance coverage? 
Short answer is no. I, I see a time, and that time may be now, of where the traditional coverage that is offered can change, right? And and so I'll I'll, I'll kind of go two different paths. Okay. One one of why, uh, and then one what what could be a, a change. You know, as you get into, and I'm sure you're aware, the individual coverage health reimbursement arrangement, right? Uh -huh. So it it is not a one size fits all for everyone in their healthcare needs, right? I, I know you have family and you have single plans and you pay based on what you sign up for, um, but not everyone would would want to invest their their dollars, their money in, you know, to pay back for their premiums or to have the healthcare, you know, coverage. And, and maybe they want something that is less in terms of coverage, but they're still covered, mm -hmm. you know? And so when you get into these ICHRAs, and in these models, you know, there's either a, a kind of payback or giving money on the front end so that you can go out on the market and get a coverage that suits your needs, right? So it's still a benefit. You're still, I, I say mandatory, but you're still having coverage that you would as the employer is offering. It's just offering you that coverage in a different way. Um, and so I think that, uh, you know, along with the other host of, of options as folks get creative, you know, might transform the way that we see the traditional employer-based uh, coverage or the employee-offered coverage, you know, that's been about, what, so 60, you know, 80 years now or so. Uh, it, it's going to change, but not not fully go away. Uh, and I think there's there's a couple of, of reasons why, you know, A, the, the needs are different, right? Our today's workforce is highly mobile. We don't have the same... Uh, loyalty to brands that yeah. that maybe our grandparents had, you know, in in the past, and it's it's what can you do for me right now, yeah. right? And and sometimes your traditional hospital can't meet that demand, and so having the coverage for the employee that allows them to look look somewhere else, I think, will be a benefit. And so the demand, their expectations have changed, uh, and technology has made it easier to access healthcare. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and so there's these. These factors that have all changed, but the the foundation or the base of that is is having healthcare insurance, right? And so I, I think it will always be there. It promotes a uh, a healthier employee, which then obviously is a more productive employee, which is what your employer is seeking. Uh, and so I don't I don't think they would get out of the business of that. I, I think they may change what the business looks like, uh, but they'll absolutely stay in this world, in my opinion. Uh, you know, as as they contribute both the the financial side of it, but also just the human side of it, and wanting what is best for for their employees and their associates. Convincing argument. Well, thank you, sir. <laughs> I, I, I try now. You know, now the, the fact that I don't work for an employer that that offers healthcare insurance, you know, at a large scale, they may disagree with me and <laughs> cost. Uh, and, you know, there was uh, uh, Kaiser Family Foundation did a study, you know, it's probably three years back, but it was single employee cost to the employer was roughly around 7,000. Yeah. Family cost was roughly around 21,000. Yeah. Right. And and my my take on it, you know, and I, I'm not the, the yes or no and decision maker, but as you get back into these other options, you know, maybe that 21,000 goes to that family in a different way, right? And then they select the healthcare options they need that fits their family. And then they may have, you know, an extra dollar or two that 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 wouldn't come to them anyway that could now come to them in a pre-tax form. So they're, they're just different ways, I think, that we fully support our employee uh, basis and workforce, um, but but approach it a little differently. And because- It seems, yeah, it seems- uh... Like at this point, at least, that despite the the enormously increasing cost, that tax benefit, both for the employer and the individual, mm -hmm. still kind of offsets that. Yeah. So yeah. maybe until those get out of balance, um, we'll have kind of the status quo. Co correct. Yeah. I, I mean, there will be some changes, but, you know, really, are, are they going to be sweeping? No. Um, but it, it's, you know, workforce, I think, is one of the, the largest challenges across the board, right? Healthcare, 
but even outside of healthcare, I mean, yeah. you look at your retailers, your your hospitality, all of this there, there's a huge challenge with workforce. And so, you know, to totally undo what is normally customary, you know, and, and remove employers offering insurance, I, I, I don't think you can, right? Yeah. It's not in the cards right now. All right. So I got one final question for you. Go for it, man. If there's one piece of advice you would give someone wanting to get involved in the work that you do, what would that be? It, it uh, patience uh, in regards to uh, healthcare is not it's not as agile as as some folks may think it is or want it to be, right? Mm-hmm. And so as you you look to affect change, um, you know, medicine could could be different in terms of if I can give you a a motion, your headache goes away, right? There's about a maybe a four to six hour turnover there and you see the results. But looking at at large big picture change and, and even smaller scale, you know, as you're doing continuous improvement inside your organization, uh, it takes time. And and to have patience, you know, to have the 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 internal need to serve, the desire to serve, you know, has to be there. Um and so that's what I would offer. You know, everyone will tell you the the loyalty, the honesty, the transparency, um, because we're 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 serving the community, we're serving our friends, our neighbors. Um, you know, so you need all those those characteristics and traits to to be who you are as a person. Uh, but the one thing I would say is is you got to chill, man. Like so, it. So as a Navy man, I'm like I'm shocked that you didn't use the analogy of trying to turn the ship. Well, so I, I, yes, and I don't know if you if you've been on, but so I, I was on a, a, an amphibious assault ship, and so even we were smaller as a destroyer, uh, but yeah, it's um, that's it. You know, we're not turning this thing around around fast by yeah. any means, um, but our intentions are good, right? right. Our, our our thoughts and our 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 minds, our our hearts are in the right place. Uh, and so if that's how you think, that's how you feel. I mean, there's a there's an opportunity in healthcare for you that that's here. And we would welcome you either on the administrative side or the provider side. Please come. <laughs> Inviting yeah. everybody to the table, right? right let's go. Uh, and I believe the, the Navy is a great option, too, if you're looking at, at second second courses. Excellent. So Excellent. Put that out there as a plug. Hey, Ryan, thanks so much for for joining us and talking to us about the Northwest Arkansas Council. I'm excited about what's going on up there. Yes, sir. No, thank you for the time and the opportunity to do so. I had a great time. Thank you for listening to Wonks at Work. You can listen to our bi-weekly podcast on our website, achi.net. A special thanks to the Bobby L. Roberts Library of Arkansas History and Art which is a part of the Central Arkansas Library System for allowing us to use their studio to record. If you have any topics you would like for us to consider, please email us at achi at achi.net. As a reminder, the views, information, and opinions expressed by our podcast guests are solely those of the guests and do not necessarily represent those of the Arkansas Center for Health Improvement. The primary purpose of this podcast is to educate and inform. The podcast does not constitute medical, legal, or other professional advice or services. We hope you've enjoyed our latest episode. And again, thanks for listening.